So question four then from the 2014 National Five second paper. Here we are. Mean and standard deviation. There's four. There's five marks for this question altogether. Four marks for finding the mean and the standard deviation. One mark for using the results. But notice, show clearly all your working. Because you could just do this in your calculator without knowing how these things work. So you know in this question there'll be no full marks for the answer on its own. Even this first bit. Calculate the mean for one mark. Show clearly all your working. So that means you'll have to put something down apart from just the answer. But you would do that anyway because you'd probably do that in conjunction with part two. So I'll set this out. And there are two formulae for the standard deviation. So in this one, to begin with, I'll use the first one. Now, there is a reason for having two formulae. I was about to say different formulae, but they're not different formulae. One is just an algebraic rearrangement of the other. The reason for the two formulae are the first one is easier to manipulate if the mean turns out to be a whole number or a number with only one decimal place, for instance. The second variety is better to use when the mean turns out to be a long decimal number. So it really depends on what's the mean before you decide which one to use. But you probably always just use one of them. But strictly speaking, that's what the two formulae are for. One's for a nice exact mean, one's for a nasty mean. Well, it said find the mean showing all your working, but I think I'll show the total then. I know I need that column anyway, no matter which of the formulae I'm going to use. So I'll call the numbers X, and I think I'll just pop them into numerical order. Makes no difference to the calculation. 55, 56, 57, 58, and 60. Because I could show the working by showing the total here. Well, you could use your calculator, obviously, but this is a pattern. What have we got? We've got 10, 21, 29, carry 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 33. So it comes to 339. Now, the name for that part is sigma x, the sum of the x's. So in showing for the working for this, I would have the mean, which you would call x bar, would be the sum of all the x's divided by how many there are. So that would be 339 divided by 6. And that's going to give you 56, and I'll 56.5. And that's one mark, but not on its own. You would need to show this total at least in the way to that, but you're going to need this column anyway for what you're going to do now for also part two, which is find the standard deviation. Now that's not bad, 56.5, even though it's got a decimal place in it, because they're all in the 50s, you're only going to have a two digit number here. So we'll just use the first formula. So what's x minus x bar? Put lines down if you like. That means subtracting this. Use your calculator if you like. 53 minus that, remember. If you're doing a subtraction, which it seems the wrong way around, just think of it the other way around and call it negative. 56.5, take away 53. So negative 3.5. 56, that would be negative 1.5. Now it's just negative 0.5. Now we're moving up. That's just 0.5 above. That's 1.5 above. It's all balancing nicely. And that one's 3.5. A quick check, even though this is completely symmetrical here, a quick check if you've got the mean correct is this column should add up to zero if your mean's correct. Now for the formula, I want the sum of these. I want the sum of, sorry, I want the sum of the squares of these. X minus X bar squared. Again, you could use your calculator here. Just press the buttons. But there's an easy pattern for two-digit numbers that end in a five. If you've got a two-digit number that ends in a five and you square it, it will end up as n times, don't know why I put that in, n plus one for the first two digits and then a 25 at the end. So these are all going to end 0.25. And the first two digits will just be made up of that number times the one above it. Three times four, 12. 1 times 2, 2. Nothing, 0 would be 0. 0 would be 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 4 is 12. 
And again, I can add, the, add this up with it, a calculator, because each of these quarters, four of them make one, so that's one and a half, 1.5, one to carry, two, four, six, eight, nine, 29.5. And that's the sum of these things, the x minus x bar squared, the sum of the squares of the deviations, how far each of the numbers is away from the mean. Now, you don't need to state this formula, I'll put it down anyway. It's the square root of the sum of the squares of the deviations over n minus 1 for a sample. Now, you don't need to state that. You could just go in with the figures because you know it's going to be this number, which is 29.5, over 1 less than the number in the sample. So that'll be over 5. And the marks are going, even though you have to do all of this table, there's one mark just for ending up with this column here. The second mark is for putting the appropriate figures into the formula. And then the third mark, which will be the fourth mark in part A, will just be for pressing those buttons and rounding it off as appropriate. So, pressing the buttons gives you 2.4289 and so on. And if you're wondering how to round it off, there's a comparison later, which has only got one decimal place. So that means I'll go for 2.4. And these were in seconds. I should have said seconds there as well. But then there was no mention in the marking scheme of any marks being allocated for remembering the units, which they should have. But then there's precious few marks going about. Now, part B's got no working in it. It says she changes her training routine, hoping to improve her consistency. After the change, she records her times for another six laps. This time, the mean is 55. Well, that was certainly faster on average. On average. And the standard deviation was 3.2. Those are both seconds. Has it improved her consistency? See, this question is just checking if you know what these numbers, these two measures of this distribution stand for. The mean is a measure of the centre of it, the central tendency, the average of it. The standard deviation is a measure of how spread out they are, or its sort of partner term consistency, how close together they are. Now, in the marking scheme, if you mention consistency, if you just say it's done something to the consistency, because the word there is there already, you don't get anything unless you say something else. But you should always say two things anyway. If you're going to mention this number, then you'll have to mention that the mean is a measure of the average. If you're going to mention this number, you're going to have to mention that the standard deviation is a measure of the spread. I would only put them both down. So has it improved her consistency? Well, the answer is yes or no, and the answer is no. That's a bigger spread. So you'd say no, no marks. Why? Because the standard deviation is bigger now. No, 3.2 is bigger than 2.4 seconds. I'll put this all down anyway. The standard deviation has increased. So the results, awful lot of writing, then whatever you want, are more spread out or less consistent. I've said more, so I'll just say more spread out. Or you could say less consistent because you've mentioned it all. You're showing you're using the standard deviation. You're mentioning the word standard deviation in conjunction with spread or consistency. And you're showing, you're showing that it has done that by comparing the numbers. And that would be a mark. <clears throat> now, there is this other formula for the standard deviation, which you shouldn't have needed to use in this question because the mean wasn't bad. It's not as nice as having a whole number, certainly, but one decimal place only resulted in those two figures anyway. Had this mean had a greater number of decimal places, then this middle column for the second formula would have been huge and you'd have to round it off and lose your accuracy. And of course, when you square it, it'd be even bigger still. That's where this other formula comes in, because you don't need to work out the difference between the number and the mean. You're just using the sum of the numbers, which I've done already, and the sum of the squares. You just need the numbers and their squares. So when I add this up, I'll have the sum of the squares. It takes more calculation, though.
but it's worth it if the mean's a big nasty decimal. And that's what this formula's for. Nasty mean, use this one. Nice mean, use the other one. That's why they're there. Usually with the first one, when it's a nice mean, it means you can do all the working by hand because everything's kept fairly small. This isn't too bad, actually, with these fives at the front here. Use your calculator, certainly, to work them out. But there's a way of doing these by inspection when you're squaring two-digit numbers. Remember, you've got a two-digit number. If I had something like A plus B, that's no stand for the two digits. Remember, of course, that A for the first digit is really a 10 times it squared. That would be, when you square them, that would be at the end, you would have B squared. At the beginning, it would be A squared, but also times, notice, times 100, which puts it over out of the four places, puts this exclusively into these two places. And that can, can only be a two-digit number, because it can't be a 10, puts it exclusively into these two places, so they would keep separate, if it wasn't for the fact that you've got twice the product, which is 20 times AB. But in this one, because it's a 5, the 20 times the 5 just means it's a 100 of these, which just means there's going to be whatever that is in the hundreds column. Well, it worked like this. That would be 2509, but I'm going to have a 3 in this column. So 2809. Yes, you just press the buttons of the calculator. So this is a bit interesting. That should have been 2525. But with a hundred of these going into the third column, instead of 25, it's going to be 30. This should have been 25, 36. But with a hundred of them going on to the 25, that's going to be 31. That should have been 25, 49. But with a hundred of those going into the third column, it's going to be 32. That should have been 25, 64, but with 100 of those, with 8 going into the third column, it's going to be 33. And that's an easy one just in its own, because that's just 3600. Just as a matter of interest, because you probably wouldn't do that anyway, you just go do 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 in your calculator. 10, 28, 33. 10, 18. 10, 21. And then that's like six threes, taking one of them as 18 and the one that's left over, 19. But you would just press the buttons. But you would just press the buttons. So putting it into this then, you would have the sum of the x squareds. Oh, that's this one here. That was 19183. The square of the sum of the x's, that's going to be 339 squared all over, and how many there are? Six all over 5, and of course that extends down over them all. And doing it this way, that, getting we had that total anyway, getting that total was one of the marks, putting it into the form as the second mark, and same as before, pressing the buttons would give you this mark. And put it into your calculator, and of course here you get to use a fraction inside of a fraction when you're pressing the buttons. Gives you, as before, 2.4289 and so on, which you would then just round off to 2.4 seconds.